Well, there is a very interesting subject, and that is the personality of animals. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. Even snakes have personalities. Within species, there are general behavioral patterns. And even within a single species, each snake may be found to have behavioral traits which are common just to that particular snake, like a personality. Now, um, I wanted to speak about green mambas uh, regarding this personality trait uh, issue. They are far different to black mambas. Black mambas indeed are very excitable creatures, uh, very nervous like a racehorse, and would rear up like a racehorse, open their mouth, uh, exposing the inky black interior, and you can often see the sheaths of the fangs set forward in their mouths. If you've seen mambas bite things, and I have many times, it's remarkable, they, uh, the mouth comes down almost in a stabbing uh, situation so the 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 mouth doesn't even close necessarily but they stab you with those two fangs and in rapid succession three or four times before you can even blink an eye now although green mambas can bite just as quickly they're not that excitable they're more calm of course you get green mambas that are completely insane and you get ones that do bite but generally speaking, they're a very calm creature, more laid back than the black mamba. So, that doesn't mean to say you can take uh, chances, because you never know when you're going to meet with the wrong fellow. For instance, completely out of the norm, uh, a lady once, uh, a number of years ago, was sitting on a couch with her boyfriend, late afternoon I think it was um, window open and it's the south coast of Natal lots of green mambas there very beautiful in fact some of the most beautiful green mambas you will ever see in your life come from the that area around Margate um, Hebedean and so on now she was just sitting there, I think they were watching television, when a green mamba came through the window at great speed and dived down into her t-shirt and curled up. And can you believe that? Dived down into her t-shirt and curled up. Of course she saw it going in and she didn't know what to do. She just kind of sat there, uh, completely bewildered. Um, they had to get someone to come and retrieve the mamba which I believe was quite a process, but I wasn't uh, in attendance, but amazing thing. Um, then you had uh, Dennis Groves, who uh, was one of the pioneer uh, snake handlers at the Transvaal Snake Park at Halfway House uh, between Johannesburg and Pretoria many years ago. He got bitten so many times he lost most of his fingers and went on to be... Um, a rather famous taxidermist, even with the few fingers he had left. Absolutely amazing, very talented man. Um, but he told me once when we were having a chat that he received a tin from Natal uh, in which uh, there was a suspected green mamba. And uh, he took his grab stick. Uh, most people by now would have seen a grab stick on television took the grab stick, pried the lid open, popped it off, stuck the grab stick into the opening of the tin to grab the mamba, and the mamba shot up the grab stick at top speed, bit him on the hand, and shot back down the grab stick into the tin and curled up, and did nothing more. He, of course, was in big trouble, but he survived. He survived all his bites, many of them. Uh, just his fingers uh, took a bit of a beating. Then we have the most incredible story that happened at one of our facilities. We had a chap who worked there for us, uh, a very decent, uh, nice character. 
His name was uh, Shlonipani, which roughly means respect in the dialect um, from the tribal area he came from, Shlonipani. Anyway, he had been working for us for some time and showed absolutely no fear of snakes and was uh, able to work with them quite easily. So, I wasn't there and I got this uh, bizarre phone call and uh, the following was explained to me. First of all, he tells me he's fine. Well, if he tells me he's fine, I know something's happened. So now I wait with bated breath uh, and my stomach uh, in a bit of a knot because you never know what's going to happen. Um, I'm fine, he says. I said, oh, I see, Flonipani. Thank you for telling me. So why are you fine? You were fine before. What happened in the intervening period? So we had green mambas which we had been raising. They had reached about three quarters of a meter. So very venomous, uh, big enough to kill you quite easily. And they were in fairly large enclosures. And all they had to do was wait until the mamba was furthest from the uh, door, the little opening door, and they could pop in a meal for the snake and then quickly shut the door so there was absolutely no danger involved. It was a clean, clear uh, path into the cage and out and feed the snake and done. So he goes and sticks the mouse in and sticks it in a bit far and what does he do? He frightens the mamba and so when the mamba got frightened it moved to the side of the cage where the door was like lightning and then started to shoot out of the door into the room and uh, Flonipani who was quick in every possible respect he runs like the wind uh, amongst other things and as quick as lightning he tried to swat the snake back into the door I mean you have never heard of anything so dumb in your life it's like catching a hand grenade um, thinking now that you've caught it everything's fine so he swats the snake so of course the snake is much quicker than Slonipani's swat so it bites him Flonipani, however, had a hand like steel. He worked so hard, always overdid things by a hundred, and so his hands were very strong, and he had a calloused section of his hand below the thumb, which the skin had grown so thick on, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to stick a knife through it. And the mamba bit him just there. How is that for luck? And the fangs were still embedded in his hand. And so thick was the skin and impenetrable that no venom could enter his bloodstream. I have never heard of such luck. And dear old Flonipani got away completely unscathed. How's that?